Amen. I forgot that I was supposed to talk to the trustees about raising that money. Brother Ray, you cool with that? Yeah. Yeah, Brother Pete, you all right with that? Brother Chris, you all right with that? We're in like Flynn. Because the one thing I forgot to tell you is I was praying over here Monday morning or Tuesday morning, and the Holy Ghost told me to do that. So uh, them trustees ain't going to have no problem with nothing that the Holy Ghost says. Basically, the Lord said, you just you start opening up and we'll build it. Huh? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I was telling Sister Bonita about it yesterday afternoon. She said, you got enough men in the church to help do something like that? And I said, we'll get her built. <laughs> we'll get her built. The Lord might send a strong wind and just throw it up for us. Huh? I want y'all to really act excited, man. Y'all hurt the brother's feelings. <laughs> now, come on now. That's an amazing thing that's happening here. Is we can't even, we can't even have no dinners. Because we ain't got room. Sister, hey, I, she ain't acting like it too much tonight. But y'all mess around talk to Sister Betty too much. She done planning an idea where we got to go to two services because we fill up the whole sanctuary. Right. Huh? Now, remember I said she ain't acting too much like it tonight. But, no, I'm just, I'm just teasing. Does anybody need a paper, a handout? Yes, please. Please. Amen. We got it this week. And then we got next week for sure. And then we may be done after this week and next week, but we may have one more. There's some other things I was reading about today that deal with holiness that we haven't talked about in a long time. And uh, so... Uh, uh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we need some more? We need some more. Anybody over here need one? Brother Dole needs one. We're going to have to have, start having everybody call me and tell me if they're going to be at church or not. Amen. I can go make some more copies. Week before last, I made 50. Had to go back, back and make 10 more and barely had enough. And then last week, I made 60 and had a whole stack left. This week, I made 50. Somebody, who needed one over here on this side? There somebody raised their hand, Brother Dole. Did you give Brother Dole one? All right. Amen. Hope you have your Bibles, have the, the handout, and uh, we will once again qualify our lesson and uh, our message tonight. Uh, how many of you realize and, and understand and are coming to more grips with the understanding that salvation is a process? It's not an event. It's a process. Brother David, never have I understood more. Never have I understood more what Jeremiah the 18th chapter means. When the Lord told Jeremiah, rise and go to the potter's house and watch him work. And then I'm going to cause you to hear my voice. The potter, the potter is still working on me. It's a process. And as soon as you receive the Holy Ghost, you're just as saved as some and are baptized in Jesus' name, you're just as saved as someone who's lived for God 50 years. Can I get an amen? amen? The Bible does not teach that we are saved by good works, but according to Ephesians, Ephesians 2 and 10, that we are saved unto good works. You get saved, and then you start behaving better. <laughs> You get filled with the Holy Ghost and you no longer do the things that you once did. But understand this, that our separation isn't determined by the world, but by God. And as we are led by the Spirit, and that involves hearing, listening, 
and obeying, we are then maturing into what? Two things. What God wants us to be and then what God needs us to be. You see, God wants us to be completely fulfilled in Him. And He needs us to be what He wants us to be in order for to maximize our effectiveness in the church and in the lives of those we are to win to the Lord. You cannot, when you're first filled with the Holy Ghost, you cannot have the knowledge, you can't have the skill, you can't have the wisdom that you need in order to help win and disciple people. So God changes you and then you begin to be able to help change others. But, when we refuse to grow, we die. And when we willfully disobey, now I want you to listen to this, it's about to be straight now. When we willfully disobey the Word of God, the man of God, and the Spirit of God, we can't be saved. Say, man, you're judging. I, I was afraid somebody was going to say that. Do you want to raise your hand? <laughs> that dog don't hunt. You cannot just blatantly disregard the Word of God and the plan of God for your life and, and the plan of God for mankind and say, oh, by the way, I'm going anyway, like it or not. <laughs> you can't be saved without being obedient to the Word of God. Because if you truly believe, you'll be obedient. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not won't ever make it to the water. And he shall be damned. That's what the book said. It's very important for you to recognize, in case some of you swallowed your tongue when you saw the handout and, and you thought, oh goodness, it's important that these are biblical principles that we teach. It's not a list of rules or regulations, etc. We're not trying to be mean or restrictive, but simply trying to help each of us to grow in Jesus Christ while seeking to maintain the created distinction between the sexes that has been rendered obsolete by society, by the world. Please, 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 do not, and I want you to know I'm giving you fair warning, this is in no way arrogant or egotistical. Do not come to me complaining about something I teach from a carnal mindset. Why, why would I say that? It's because we're, if you come in a carnal mindset, we're discussing apples and oranges. If there's something that you don't like that we teach, and please understand I'm not talking to our guest. I am not talking to our guest. Our guests can come to me with anything that they like. And I'll go to the Word because everything I teach and preach, I can back up by the Word of God. I'm not afraid. But if you something scrubs your hide just a little bit the wrong direction, the first thing you need to do before you come to me is you need to get somewhere and pray through to the Holy Ghost. And make sure you're thinking with a godly mindset. Because you cannot come with a worldly mindset expecting to accomplish anything in the Holy Ghost. The Lord created and made a distinction between the sexes. We talk, talk about that the last two weeks. But society, the world has decided that ain't the way it's supposed to be. The church cannot allow the world... We cannot allow the world to, to set our standards of lifestyle. The world is lost. Oh, come on. Now, for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. You cannot expect to get anywhere in the Lord by the way of the world. Jesus said, no man cometh to the Father but by me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. But it cannot be treated as the world declares it by a Bible-believing child of God. Now remember this, if you disagree, or if you don't understand, do not stop coming to church. This is the best church in the world. Okay? Don't stop coming to church. We love you. We love everybody. We love every color. We love every creed. We love every society level. We love everybody. And we'll keep on loving you. Okay? We'll keep on loving you. 
Everybody's welcome. Come worship with us. If you like what you feel, you feel like God led you here, guess what? He did. Love God with us. Grow with us. I'm going to teach this every year. And although you may not grasp it immediately, rest assured you will at some point if you continue to seek after the Lord. Because the closer you get to the Lord, the more the world falls off of you. Be a part of this church in every way. There are and there will be more limitations with regard to leadership, platform, participation. But new worshipers will always be given time to grow. I'm going to preach it. I'm going to teach it. Don't ever get tired of me saying it. If you're tired of me saying that, you need to just go to the bathroom at the beginning. Because I'm going to keep on saying it. New worshipers are going to be given time to grow. I was. I am. You know what? The Lord gave it to me. I've got to show myself and others the same mercy that He showed me. So tonight we're going to talk about gender distinction involving hair. The way we do our hair. There are four ways we are distinct scripturally that society has attempted to change or blur, etc. Number one is sexuality. Number two is gender. Number three is the way we dress. And number four is the way our hair is. The Bible deals with all four areas. Romans chapter number 1, 26 and 27, it deals with sexuality. And, and then in gender, Genesis 1 and 27, deals with the creation of male and female. Last week we talked about dress. The woman shall not there wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are an abomination of the Lord thy God. Deuteronomy 22 and 5. And then there's hair. There's hair. When I get through tonight... I'm going to qualify this by letting you know. If you come ask me, why did God want it this way? I am going to tell you, I don't know. <laughs> Sister Leanne, I don't really like that. I like to be able to say I have a reason for it. I don't know. All I know is that you, as you grow in the Lord, you read the Bible, anybody that ever has grown in the Lord, the, the limitations don't get less and less, they get more and more. Let's talk about just an overview real quickly, and then we're going to get into some scripture. Some reasons we glean from scripture why a woman should have long hair. Long hair is a sign of her submission to authority. The angels are watching to see if she has this sign. It is a shame for a woman to pray or prophesy with her head uncovered. Nature teaches her to have long hair instead of short hair or a shaved head. Long hair is a woman's glory and is one of God's methods for maintaining the distinction between male and female. Some reasons we glean from Scripture why men should wear short hair. Short hair on men is a symbol of leadership and is submission to Christ's leadership. A man who prays or prophesies with his head, his natural head covered, dishonors his spiritual head, which is Christ Jesus. Nature teaches him to have short hair. Take a look at the brother up here tonight. Long hair is a shame on a man. That's what the Bible says. And it is one of God's methods for maintaining a distinction between male and female. 1 Corinthians chapter number 11. Let's explore it just a little bit. We're going to be jumping around just a little. Brother Mark, try to follow me if you can. Amen. If you can't, just keep following. We'll get there. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. It's important. It is so important that I share with you this right now. The focus of this teaching, according to the Word of God and the desire of God, is the distinction between the sexes. Men and women are made differently, act differently, assimilate things differently, think differently, etc. Men and women are not the same. They are made to complement one another, not be just like one another. I talked about this just a touch last year. I'm not going to talk about it a whole lot this year except to give you a point to ponder. When a man, I, I 
practiced this in the shower, Brother David. And I cracked myself up. So if I get cracked up. In the world that we live, when a man decides that he's really supposed to be a woman, guess what? He starts wearing dresses. He gets long hair, other visible parts, and becomes as feminine as he possibly can. Can you imagine? This is the funny part. Can you imagine me getting up and sitting down, walking in there to the kitchen, and say, Hey, baby, I'm a woman. <laughs> Y'all see why I crack myself up now. I got to thinking about that in the shower. Hey. I'm a woman. <laughs> it don't work that way. It don't work that way. But does it? Think, think about it for a minute. Does it? Uh-uh. They do just what... Whatever his name, Bruce... <laughs> Wouldn't nobody have ever done nothing for him if he still looked like the guy throwing the javelin and just said, hey, I'm a woman, guys. Everybody would say, you're stupid, you're ignorant, you're idiot, you're a man. We can tell by looking. What do you think about that? Huh? People that desire to represent Jesus Christ as His designated occupiers, you notice He said, occupy until I come. That means be in charge, be in dominion. People that desire to represent Jesus Christ must seek to implement the differences between men and women and celebrate them both as a testimony unto God, to the world, and to ourselves, and as an act of submission. Which is boiled down to, I don't understand it, I don't know it, don't even like it, but the Bible says it, so here I am. That's how it begins. In 1 Corinthians 11, we're given some very clear teaching on the length of men's and women's hair. Now this book is a letter. And I think I've taught you before, we have 1 and 2 Corinthians in the Bible, but there's strong evidence that there were four letters to the Corinthians, and I think 1 Corinthians was actually the second letter, and 2 Corinthians was actually the third letter. So one and four we don't have, I think, but don't quote me on that. But prior to chapter number 11, Paul has dealt with several issues in this church that have arisen up in this church or group of churches, and the sole purpose that these things rose up was to tear the church down and by fostering disunity. Unity. And one of the primary things that he had to deal with uh, is men, and, 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 don't, and don't throw no rotten tomatoes at me, but primarily women who have failed to fill their role in the church. You can read it in the Bible, it's there. That's where, now listen to me just a minute. Before you women start getting all mad at me. This is the book that says women need to keep silent in the church. Okay, that does not mean what a lot of people try to make it to mean. What it means is, is the women were trying to take over. Those women were trying to take over and they were getting all loud and dramatic and you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do that for us, Sister Meredith. Yeah. And so Paul is just checking them. He's not telling them women don't have a role in the church because the book of Acts tells us, as I've told you before, upon my servants and my handmaidens will I pour out of my spirit, your sons and daughters will prophesy. There's a work for women in the church, in ministry, to do things of the Lord. That does not mean a woman can't talk in church. Don't let nobody sell that to you. That's not what that means. But that does mean... You know your role. <laughs> Paul has dealt with matters of the heart. But now deals with matters of lifestyle that are a result of the divisive behavior. 
You can't keep, if you're all jacked up on the inside, it will show up on the outside. You can't keep it hid. But all of these things reveal a lack of submission. Now the hair issue, if you please, is primarily a matter of authority, Brother David. And the hierarchy of authority is revealed to us in chapter number 11 and verse number 3 of 1 Corinthians. But I would have you know that the head of every man, 1 Corinthians 11 and 3, that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. That delivers the hierarchy. Now don't think this is Trinitarian because it's not. It's God, the Spirit, the omnipotent, omnipresent Spirit. Then it's Jesus Christ, the man, who God, who wrapped Himself in flesh and became the intercessor for us. And then it is man, and then it is woman. That's what the Bible says. Well, I don't like it. Tough. Say, well, I, now you there you go to being mean. No, I prayed to not be mean. Okay? I prayed to, remember I told you, be courageous with kindness. It ain't got nothing to do with being mean. It's the Word of God. Okay? And I'm about to, but when I get down to the end of this, you're going to be amazed. Okay? God is the head. With the submission of the man Christ Jesus, the Bible says he was submissive to the cross. All the way through the cross, followed by men and then women. Now, it is not a matter of subservience. Do you know what I mean by that word? It is not a matter of servanthood. It is not a matter of me, Tarzan, and you, Jane. Okay? But it is of the created order. With the authority being a matter of, please understand this, and I hope we're receiving it. The authority is a matter of responsibility rather than who serves who. Men, we are responsible to care for, provide for, and the ladies are to trust that we will be able to do that. Hence the term obey in the marriage vows is, is on the woman's side. Okay, that word is not obedience as you might say. I tell you what to do and you do it. You fix me some coffee. You know, you lay out my clothes. You run my bath water. You do this, that, and the other. That's a bunch of baloney. Okay, it means trust. It means I trust you to lead our family. I trust you to lead our home. I trust you to take care of us when the boogeyman comes. Can I get an amen or two in the house? Now this in itself has been misconstrued and misrepresented on both sides by male and female. And I'm going to just step out on a limb right here and say, I see it happening in our church. And some of you who are struggling need to learn your own role. Let me tell y'all a way to get me to move on real quickly. When I say something that's right on target, stand up and start clapping and stuff. Because if y'all sit there like a knot on a pickle, that means I just hit a nerve. And that's when we start doing, what do we call it? Middle buster preaching. Hell and the devil... Don't want me preaching this tonight. I felt that this afternoon while I was in there, I second-guessed myself and I questioned it and I went back and went over it and went over it and went over it. And the reason is, is we are, some of you, especially our newer people, there's some things, there's some things starting to click in your mind and in your spirit and you're recognizing that this ain't about beating you down. This is about you bowing down in submission and you realize that when you bow down in submission to the Word of God, you get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and stronger and the devil is worried. The devil is upset because you're fixing to tap in to the source of power. Which is encapsulated when John the Baptist said, I must decrease and he must increase. This has been so misconstrued and misrepresented on both sides. 
the distinction of the sexes, the, the know your role, the submission to God, Jesus Christ, the man, and then the woman. Leading to a virtual abandonment of it by much of our society. And it is no secret that when we begin to abandon the created order, we also begin to abandon the morals that made us the greatest country in the world. It ain't our money, it ain't our technology that made us the greatest country in the world. You can't find it anywhere except one place. You know where I found it at? Brother David, I found it in Israel. This country has been in existence just barely over 200 years, Brother McKinney. There are countries that have been in existence the entire 6,000 years of the Bible that aren't as blessed as we are. But you know what? I went to Jerusalem and Brother Terry, they've only been a country since 1948 and they're equal to the United States. The reason why this country has been so blessed is because we clung to the old rugged cross and Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Saints of God, we cannot get away from the truth that exists for our salvation. And part of it is the created order. You cannot get out of your place. You cannot get out of your role. You cannot live a life that's unsubmitted and victorious at the same time. The church must assist in restoring the creative order, thereby restoring the conduits of spiritual authority and approval that we are missing. One area in which we struggle is that of submission, which by its very definition arouses disdain and rebellion when looked at through a carnal lens rather than a spiritual one. Well, if he starts acting like he's supposed to, then I'll submit to him. You can't find that there and there. As a matter of fact, you can find in the Bible where you are to submit to an unsaved spouse. And the Bible says you can win him through your submission. Now let me tell you something. Let me just load up on here. Some of y'all don't believe that. Let me load up on that and tell you. How is it? Trey, you hear when you're reading in the Bible, the Bible said the wisdom of God is foolishness to the world. How is it that you can be submissive and that you can be the kind of a wife that God wants you to be and you can win him, win him over through your submission because it's not submitting unto him, it's submitting unto the Lord. And when you recognize that's what it is, you don't care no more. Boy, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel anointed. I feel like six hours worth of this stuff on me right now. We got to get, we've got to get things in the order they belong in. Say, well, I really don't know what to do. Get your nose in the Word of God and get your knees on the floor. Because as many as are led by the Spirit, God have mercy. That's where the Spirit will lead you. He will not lead you to a place that's contrary to the Word of God. When you begin to be led by the Spirit and submit to the Holy Ghost, then you will begin to do the things God wants and you will see your life lining up. Don't, some of y'all don't believe that. Some of y'all don't believe that. You just keep on doing it your way. Sister Haney made a statement in her book. There's been a few of you read it. I hesitate to loan it out because I want to make sure I get it back. I've already dog-eared it. Brother David, I've done reread and reread chapters. I've made marks all in it. It's a book already. It looks like it's 10 years old. It's a tremendous book because of the emotional connection to holiness. Because she talks in it about it. She and her pastor, pastor of the largest church in the United Pentecostal Church. Their auditorium will seat 6,000 people. It's in Stockton, California. They have, a, they have you know, regularly run between 3,500 and 4,000 in Sunday school. They have many different campuses. But when you read in that book of her standing at the counter in Nordstrom's or her looking in the mirror and, and, and resenting her beautiful hair and her sitting there, there's such a connection when you realize it, it's, it's, it's the sacrifice of submission that's honorable to 
to God. When you see the emotional connection, you can read book after book after book that us fellows wrote about holiness uh, and you will not get the connection until a God-called uh, anointed lady begins to write from her heart. Here's what she said. This guarding the channels of the supernatural is the name of her book and, and it embodies a clear understanding of God's plan. When she made this one statement, I'm sure glad God made me a woman. Everybody don't feel that way. 